Hey guys, Hardcore Hector here with another tech product review. And recently, I bought the Elgato Game Capture HD60 Pro. I was looking for something really good that can capture really good video game gameplay. And this was pretty much the best thing that I could find for a good price too. It's relatively new, so I was a little bit freaked out to try it. This isn't really an unboxing because I already unboxed it. I put it through its paces, so this is more just a review. But I will say the dimensions, I do have the dimensions and weight over here listed on the website. Just in case you were wondering, so in case you wanted to see it. It's 122 by 56 by 14 millimeters, and it is 102 grams in weight, or if you're using the Imperial thingy system, 4.8 by 2.2 by 0.55 inches and 3.6 ounces. Okay, so this thing is really small. It's an internal capture card for desktop PCs. So you have to stick it into your desktop PC. It uses PCIe, PCI Express, um, one interface. So you can put it in any PCIe Express lane and it'll work just fine. If you have a long lane, a 16 lane, it's just a little one interface, so you can stick it in there. It'll work just fine. Um, this can record gameplay up to 20 or 1080p, 60 frames per second. But of course, it has other options. It says supported resolutions: 1080p 60, 1080p 30, 1080i, 720p 60, 720p 30, 576p, 576i, and 480p which is a little interesting because there's only an HDMI in and HDMI out slot on the back. So I'm not really sure what games can actually output in HDMI in a standard definition resolution. This does not support any audio video composite or component or S video options input. As I already said, there's only HDMI so I bought this, what is it called? HD video converter. So you use yellow, white, and red input, HDMI output. And I already reviewed this on another video. So if you want to see that video, link in the description and probably at the end of this video, we'll see. So this device is really, really great when it comes to recording. It can do 1080p, 60 frames per second, and the software works really, really well too. I'm on Windows 10 64-bit. My computer is just fine. I will, this is the system requirements. So it's Windows 7, SP1 or later, you will need a second generation Intel Core i5 CPU to record, but if you're streaming, you will need a second generation Intel Core i7 CPU. And I already said the PCI, PCIe stuff. You will need four gigabytes of RAM, and of course an internet connection to download the software because it doesn't even come with a CD for the software and of course if you want to stream. It records really really importantly, well I guess kind of importantly, I don't know. It has H.264 hardware encoding, in, encoding and the file sizes or the file types is MP4 which is really great because I've been recording using other external um, hardware capture devices they do not record in mp4 you can record in a different format and then it exports mp4 but it's just another step this one goes directly to mp4 with h264 hardware encoding which is really great if you want to upload directly to youtube or you can edit you know on your own computer but if you're editing on your own computer you will need a good enough well good enough hardware for one and good enough video editing software if you wanted to keep it 1080p and 60 frames per second. So let's take a look at the software where there's a ton more information, all the nuts and bolts. And here we are with the software for the Elgato Game Capture HD 60 Pro. Um, this is how it pops up when it first starts up and then you can maximize it and then use all the controls. And if you don't touch the mouse for a while and you just use the gameplay, it will go full screen like that, which is really good if you want to play using only your computer monitor in case you don't have a side computer monitor next to your TV or whatnot. 
and this is 100% lag free. So you press left, it instantly goes left. Press right, it, it instantly goes right, which is very, very great. Again, if you're playing on your monitor and you don't have a second monitor next to your TV, etc., etc. So let's check out everything. You can. This is all the capture stuff. This is the edit when you know after you capture something, you can edit it, obviously. But the really cool thing is the capture button down here. Of course, you can just press the capture button to start recording, or you can go back a little bit and go to the last thing you're just at and then start recording, or you can just click live and it'll go back to the live version, you know? You can always go back in case you miss something and then start recording from there. And over here, this is the basic setting. You can do an input device if you like. I don't know if any of this stuff really really alters anything. Maybe it just alters the stuff down here. Of course, audio input. It can be your microphone or the audio that's coming in from the HDMI port. Color range standard or expanded. You can switch profile to 1080p, 720p, standard or mobile. Again, there's only HDMI in, so unless you have some other HDMI port that does standard definition somehow, the standard definition button shouldn't really do anything. And then you can allow 60 FPS. You use this little switch right here to alter the quality. The, it really alters the megabits per second when you're recording video. So the best quality will be about 60 megabits per second, which of course means a bigger file, but also means the quality will be a lot better. And then convert standard definition to 640 by 480. It says with this box checked, Game Capture HD will convert 720, 480, and it disappeared. Or 72576 input to progressive 640 by 480, and it keeps disappearing. Output for best compatibility with playback devices. And then you can stretch standard definition input. Check this box if capture standard definition video looks squished or dist distorted picture, mess with the brightness, contrast, saturation, and hue, profiles, I guess to keep one of these, you know, you can sw switch to a pro profile and it'll keep something like this, it'll alter this and all that stuff, it'll just keep it all saved. So right here is the game audio, you can just move this to the left, move this to the right, and it alters the audio that's coming into the from the game, obviously, and of course you can mute it down here so you don't hear it on your computer um, speakers because if you mute it up here it will not be recording any game audio so mute it down here if you don't want to hear it on your monitor but still allow it to record now the live streaming is over here you can do twitch or youtube and i'm pretty sure there's other options yes daily motion live stream and then rtmp i'm not sure i'm not sure about that one i'm not familiar with it and over here are the settings for the streaming server automatic Privacy, it can be public, unlisted, or private. Well, this is for YouTube settings. Maximum resolution can go up to 1080p. Maximum frame, frame rate can go up to 60 frames per second, but it cannot stream at 1080p 60 frames per second. So it can do 1080p 30 frames per second, or it can do 720p 60 frames per second if you're streaming. And of course, you will need the internet and the hardware to back it up. Live commentary is over here. You can switch, choose which microphone you want, and then mess with the levels, just like with the game audio. Automatically reduce other audio tracks and do other settings. Threshold. Uh, I'm not sure what that one is, so I'm not even going to try and say it. Over here is the stream button, so when you're ready to stream, you just click this button and it starts streaming, and then you click this button to enable or disable the live commentary. And what's really cool is the stream command right here. So if you have the stream command enabled in the settings over here, see enable stream command, and you can enable flashback recording. If you couldn't do this flashback recording over here, you probably don't have it enabled right here. And it's best also that you change the location so you know exactly where you're saving your video. There's also sharing, updates, hotkeys, and advanced decoder, stream command encoder, highest quality, or best perform por performance. It all depends on your hardware. But anyways, back to here. Once you have the stream command up and running, you can click one of these things to enable a webcam 
or a logo somewhere on the screen. See over here it can be a logo on the left, webcam on the right, over here logo on the right, over here webcam on the left, webcam on the right, and just do a bunch of different settings. So these things are really really great if you like to stream or just record videos and upload it and you're not very familiar with multiple video formats and logos and all that kind of stuff. So this does it pretty much all for you. So this is some of the best software that I've had with game capture hardware. Again, you can play on your monitor using this since it's totally lag free or you can just use a separate HDMI to do an output and then just play on your TV screen. And then you can have your hotkeys to your keyboard and you can just click a button to do a screenshot or click a button to record. And then again, it's lag free so it'll just automatically record when you want it to record unlike some of the other capture devices out there. Oh yes, and one more thing. I tried playing this on open broadcast software. It found the hardware, but when I try to set up anything, it would not do a preview, it would not record or anything like that. So you're pretty much stuck with this software, but good news, this software is pretty decent. So that's about all there is to the Elgato Game Capture HD60 Pro. It's about $200, so it is pretty steep unless you are a professional. There is pro in the name. So if you're a professional game commentator on YouTube or a live streamer on Twitch or YouTube or wherever else, or like me, you do strategy guides for some company or whatever. If you're a professional, I definitely, definitely recommend this. If you're just some casual dude just doing gameplays up on YouTube or whatever, you don't really need this, I don't think, in my own personal opinion. But I will leave a link in the description to an Amazon listing for this product if you want to buy it. The price might go down, I don't know, but it just came out so it's at $200 right now. And if you use my link, I will get a small cut of it and it won't cost you anything extra. It just helps keep my YouTube channel and my website and all that stuff running. So that's all there is. Again, I definitely recommend it if you consider yourself a professional. If you found this video useful, you can give it a thumbs up. And subscribe to my channel for more gameplay videos and some tech product reviews if I buy something new and I think other people should know more about it. So yeah, subscribe if you want to see any of that. And that's about it. I'm Hardcore Hector. See you guys later.